Hello everyone. I hope everyone can hear me. My name is Peter Forsman and I've been uh, at IAS since uh, the new business model started in 2009. And uh, as uh, Tobe, Tobion uh, just said, we use the register registrar model and uh, all communication is uh, by EPP. And uh, as most of you know, we run both .se and uh, .nu, but uh, I will focus on .se since it's more strictly regulated. Uh, since two 2006, we have this uh, act, or the top domain level law, that only, um, for now, it only is to, um, uh, stipulate how um, domain registries uh, with the TLDs uh, connected to Sweden uh, should be run. And um, this is direct uh, translated, but uh, this uh, stipulates that we must have a register. Uh, the register should contain the domain name, uh, uh, the holder with address, phone and number, and the, uh, electronic mail, email. Uh, but uh, the interesting part is that uh, uh, it should be available via internet, via IIS, but uh, only um, f personal data that um, uh, when uh, the, the, per uh, the persons or the affected uh, entities have um, said that it's okay to show it, otherwise uh, we must um, uh, we mustn't show it. And this is because of the personal act. Since uh, 2013, uh, the um, authority, the uh, data inspection uh, said that we couldn't show personal data, even the, the name of the holder uh, via IIS. And this, uh, for other um, companies and uh, for the IAS, uh, for example, which is uh, the foundation's domain, uh, we separate the uh, domain object from the registrant or the holder object, so it's uh, uh, hidden behind the CAPTCHA. Uh, so for companies and uh, such uh, uh, holders, every um, everything is shown to the public if you go through the capture. But uh, for this example, we, ISV, double, uh, we are um, my own domain, and nothing shows since uh, uh, n uh, no field unless I have uh, uh, said that it's okay and I want to show it uh, in public. But uh, we can't show it via uh, IIS, but uh, if someone call uh, the registry and ask uh, who is the holder, uh, we can uh, get the questions via phone or email and we will answer the name, but no, uh, no other uh, information is uh, given to the public. And for the SC domains, uh, every um, field is uh, possible to update and change, uh, except one, and that's the the most important one because uh, the, this field is, um, if it's changed, it uh, means that it's uh, it's a owner transfer. Uh, so everyone except this one is uh, possible for the holder to uh, update and change whenever. And the owner transfer for .sc domains is, um, uh, it must be within the registrar. Uh, so the, the, uh, the leaving and the receiving holder uh, must be customer at the registrar that uh, uh, proceed the owner transfer. And uh, we use EPP code or authorization codes uh, just for register transfers, not uh, for the um, owner transfer. 
And as uh, Tobi said, we are a thick registry, meaning that every uh, changes in the information about the holder and uh, objects are sent up to the um, IIS. Uh, so the since everything is done by the registrar, it means that uh, since uh, IAS as a registry have obligations uh, towards the uh, domain, top level domain act, we need to um, extend it to the, the part that uh, uh, register the domains, which, mean, which also is the reason that uh, several uh, appendix to the uh, agreement uh, is about those uh, obligations. So the registrar must uh, undertake those uh, appendixes as well. So for the new registrations, uh, the res responsibilities for the registrars uh, is to ensure the identity of the domain holder. But uh, how this is done because of the business models uh, worries a lot uh, among the registrars. Uh, the bottom line is that the holder can demonstrate the control of email address uh, by, for example, using a password sent to the address. Uh, this is to ensure that we can contact uh, the holder in case of, for example, uh, um, ADR or such. And uh, for the reg registrants, in the um, uh, terms and conditions, uh, they have the obligation to provide a complete and correct information. Uh, and after the registrations, uh, also um, give the registrar uh, an update for any changes uh, made. And also, uh, the registrar is obligated to inform the foundation the registry of all those uh, uh, updates and changes. Um, and uh, keep it uh, up to date. And uh, at least once a year, uh, contact the uh, registrant and ask them um, whether contact is uh, still uh, valid or need updating. And then they need to, uh, so they need to contact uh, the registrants and the registrants hopefully if it's uh, uh, any changes contacts the registrar that needs to update uh, to the reg uh, registry. And a little about the history. Uh, before two, 2003, uh, there were uh, all applications were manually received because 2003.se uh, was uh, reformed to free for all, first come, first served. Uh, and uh, during that time, uh, we used um, um, a similar model as uh, .dk, uh, using resellers to have the registrations, but uh, from year two and uh, forward, uh, .sc invoiced uh, uh, the customer. And uh, I know for sure that uh, around 2007, there were a couple of forced address updates that was uh, not so lucky for the registrants. Um, and after 2009, in March, uh, there were this new business model where uh, the registrars owns the uh, customer, but sends all the data to the, the thick red registry. And uh, from that time, we only use EPP for communications of all um, registration, uh, registry services. <coughs> and when it comes to improvement of the register quality, uh, the last five years we had um, have uh, uh, summer practicants that uh, uh, visual inspect most of the uh, 
domain registrations made just to see if they can spot uh, information that uh, is obviously, uh, ah, I, I call it Donald Duck information, uh, or even if it's, uh, um, yeah, um, fictitious uh, addresses that uh, is, is not uh, valid and such. And um, well, um, I would uh, um, I would say that it's about uh, uh, not even one percent of the inspected domains th that have uh, uh, invalid, as we can see, um, information. And um, 12 times each year, every registrar gets a file uploaded to the registrar web with their customer information for the, uh, that they should invoice within, I think it's 60 days. Uh, so 60 days before they should invoice the customer, they get uh, um, the registry information um, checked towards the um, um, what it's called um, national regist uh, reg registered address to see if there is um, um, yeah, differences between them, and uh, they can use that when they check this annual um, uh, check to the customer if uh, the, the correct, uh, if the address is uh, correct or uh, need to update. And um, some problems I see is that uh, ID thefts of valid registrants data, uh, meaning that those re uh, registrants that are shown like IIS, for example, the, the foundation, uh, it uh, be have become more common uh, the last two years uh, that fraudsters use valid information to register um, similar domains but and, and use the, the valid information except uh, phone number or email address uh, and um, try to fraud uh, by, for example, um, send emails with web orders to web shops and such. Uh, and it's extremely difficult to see, or uh, both for the registrar and reg registry to see that it's uh, um, ID thefts uh, because of uh, um, everything looks right, but uh, w when uh, the do domain name is used, we we spot that uh, it's, um, it's not the registrant that is the registrant, so to speak. Um, and another thing that's, uh, that I see as a problem is that uh, most of the registrar, I would uh, say that uh, about 90% of the Swedish, uh, or the, the registrars of uh, .se uh, are invoicing the, the customer via email meaning that that's the only thing that, that's really important for the, the customer um, or the registrar. So I, I think that even when they are asked if the, it's uh, the correct data, um, it's um, not um, pr uh, the highest priority for either the registrar or the re registrant. And I also think that uh, stricter control might lead to um, that it gets a lesser uh, registration used for fraudulent infringement and counterfeit content. Um, but I think that uh, with the race of ID thefts, uh, that is a, a topic that uh, most likely will continue and uh, even increase. Um, if we uh, stricter and tighten up uh, in uh, one way, they will find uh, other ways to succeed. And uh, 
my estimation is that uh, at least 50% of the .sc uh, database uh, contains um, holders that have in one way or another uh, incorrect or uh, invalid uh, data such as address, email or phone number. Uh, it could be uh, small uh, differences but uh, uh, I don't see it uh, is uh, updated at, uh, uh, as uh, much as I should hope and um, would like. And that's uh, my presentation. If anyone have uh, any question now, please feel free. I see one up there. Yep. Sasha has a question. Thank you, Marie. Um, I do have two questions. The okay. first one is, if a domain changes the provider, how does the new provider validate the customer if the address and the name is not shown in the US? Because we had some similar ideas for .de and then the register say, but we need to query if the customer who applies for a change of provider is really the domain holder and not someone else. Yeah, th that's a tricky one. Um, I understand the question. Because um, when they use the EPP code, uh, the, um, the registered data is uh, transferred and uh, you, you can't really check, I mean, um, um, when they, they move, they are already customers of yours. Um, so it's, it's a tricky one. I, I, can't, I don't really have, I mean, uh, if you ask uh, 10 registrars, they, I think they have um, different answers for how they uh, check it. I mean, I know that um, a couple of the registrars check uh, with the registry by phone and ask, uh, is this customer the, the holder of the, in this domain? But um, most of the, they don't do that. So that needs to improve. Okay, and the second question is that you said for the last five years you hired practicants to uh, check for fuzzy domain holder data like Donald Duck. Yeah. Do you think about building patterns out of what they find? Because if they find Donald Duck every year, you can have a pattern and then check it directly whether in the registration process. Uh, well, so, some patterns, uh, we, uh, I mean, I do daily checks as well, uh, but uh, I can't, you know, a thousand and thousand. But uh, some patterns, yes, of course. But uh, it's also, uh, since we, we, we run um, uh, a lot of uh, campaigns, and uh, sheep campaigns uh, draws uh, different kind of new fraudsters, and they use different kind of patterns. So it's quite hard, but, uh, well, of course, um, we have in uh, Sweden uh, a couple of um, free um, anonymous uh, email services that uh, I would say is only used to fraudulent uh, domain names, registrations. So in that way, we, we can uh, follow and see the, some patterns. But uh, otherwise, it's yes, of course, uh, infringement domains uh, like, uh, you know, a trademark uh, shop or a Swedish trademark shop and such. Uh, of course, all, all, uh, they, they um, in 99% they are registered on uh, uh, fictive persons or uh, ID thefts. Okay, thank you. Some more questions to Peter? Here. No? Oh, here. here. Okay, good. Hello. Um, when the .nu was moved to the IIS registry, the many of our domains that we had with we were registrars under the dot nu also and many of, the, of our domains which were moved suddenly got the wrong owner on, on the move and i sent you i, I talked to, <laughs> with you about this at last year's internet organa and i sent you then a mail of 400 domains which had the wrong owners at the time and you never replied i'm not sure it were sent to me because I didn't handle uh, the, uh, the I, venue. I, yeah, I think it was I, I actually, actually Elgi. The problem was that when we took over 
.NU. Mm -hmm. uh, we, they have another um, uh, sort to uh, define the owner, and mm -hmm. we did put in the organization field, and the organization field. They were all wrong. They were completely and utterly yeah, yeah. disconnected but from what, what was we, in the what we, .NU registry we, at the time. Uh, beg your, your regis the registrars to do. You have the, we thought that you have the correct data better the one that uh, the former registry sent us. So the information was that you should update the registry with the information. Uh, there aren't the same rules for .se and .nu. .nu is not under the top level domain act for, for Sweden. The, what you say cannot account for the numerous errors that we saw. There was just obviously really bad data. I can I'm show not you. particularly... Uh, I, I can't comment because I don't have the details in, yep. in, in your case, but mm. uh, just in general... Um, I mean, I tried to contact people about this and n no replies. So, what should we do? I talk with you after this, Teddy, and we okay, will sort fine. that out, and of course fine. we will. Fix okay. it. But for the NU uh, registration, as Tobi Torbjörn said, uh, .NU didn't uh, have the organization identifier. Uh, but they have an organization name, but you changed it. Well, I, I can't for... Yeah. I, I don't know the details about it, that either. But uh, uh, as we asked uh, .NU registrars, mm -hmm. is that uh, since uh, that uh, organization identifier uh, did um, get a placeholder number during uh, the time uh, until you could replace it with uh, the, your um, knowledge of the customer organization number. So that's why we, we have sent you uh, lists of which uh, domain names um, that still have the um, uh, placeholder number. Yeah, but that's so. not the problem. The problem was that the organization was completely different. Okay, well, then I can't. Yeah, I uh, but but uh, uh, perhaps, I, I don't know, uh, with the US registrar, but uh, one problem was that uh, uh, several re uh, of the older registrars did have a, didn't uh, understand the thick registry model mm -hmm. because they, uh, they changed the owner of the registrar, but didn't send the information to the earlier registry. Mm -hmm. So that uh, mismatched uh, of the holder. So, and uh, of course, the, the registry information of the uh, owner is the correct one and uh, not. So the, not, not some of the registrar's uh, information. And that could uh, be a mismatch. But I don't know if that's not in the this case. case because this this information that we got was can never have been right. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I, please. I, uh, yeah, I sent you all this, so I don't know. Oh. A year ago. So Peter, you sent it to Peter, and he hasn't responded. When it's time to respond, Peter, check your email. I okay. Will.